Sam Scalapio Jr., former coach at Notre Dame High School for a total of 12 years. Frankie was uh, probably one of the finest athletes that have came out of Harrison County. Uh, as a young boy, you know, you wouldn't realize that he was that quick and had quick feet and he had an instinct and he liked to hit. And uh, that was a good quality of a defensive player. And I think when he was able to go to Virginia Tech, it showed a lot of promise in him. The 1963 football team, what could a coach ask for any more? These young fellows that played, we had about 30 some boys out for football. Frankie, Petey Secret, and Clarence Viber, they were three real close friends. They spent their summers exercising and get ready for the football season our spring practice, I found out that Frankie could punt. What a punter he was. And I mean to tell you, he could put that ball up in the air. Frankie, uh, towards the end of when he was at uh, Marshall University, there as an assistant coach, uh, we visited some down at Lumberport where I had transferred to. And, you know, in talking with Frankie and with family, uh, it was, uh, I mean, you couldn't ask for a finer young man than Frankie Loria. And I, to me, the dream that he would be a two-time All-American from Notre Dame High School, Harrison County, Clarksburg, would you believe that? You know, it's hard to fathom what this boy had accomplished. And it was a shame with the airplane accident that Frankie was not here to share his life with his children and his wife. Frank Loria, Virginia Tech. Frank's really a speedster. You'd be fast, too, if you got your training running out of sorority houses. <laughs> 22, 22 magnificent specimens of mental agility and physical ability. The <laughs> Anthony Ellis and uh, I started teaching school at Notre Dame in 1962 and that year Frank was a junior and I want to say one thing about Frank before I ask continue the the story here uh, Frank was the type of individual that any parent would want to have a son as a son he was a talented athlete he was a competitor he was an honor student and he was a gentleman. And uh, Frank never did like practice too well, but you give him the ball, and there goes the show, Betty. He, he did it with that ball. It was something out of this world. Give him the ball, and it's over with. Same way in a game. In a game, Frank uh, was that type of person. The harder he hit you, the better he liked it. And you knew it when he hit you. And also, if you give him the ball and it looked like a play that wasn't going to work, Frank made a touchdown out of it. He was that, he had the, the sense, he had the talent, he had the natural ability, and he was so exciting to watch. Frank, in my opinion, would one day be a top university head football coach 
or a CEO of a large corporation. He had the knack and the methods to become either one when this happened. Uh, and uh, it, I just couldn't, I really couldn't accept it. I didn't believe it. And I has to check uh, with different people to make sure that what I heard was true. So Frank was so impressive that we started, uh, the club started a memorial banquet for Frank every year in March to, to recognize his abilities and uh, his um, talent. And of course, he played with, he was two-time consensus All-American at Virginia Tech. And he played with their coach, Frank Beamer. Frank Beamer and him were safeties on the Virginia Tech team. And Frank Beamer always told me that there was no way he could hit as as much as Frank, hard as Frank could. Uh, he and Frank played uh, defensive safeties. And, uh, and therefore, uh, Coach Beamer thought that much of him. And he came back two or three times for the uh, banquet that we had for Frank. Hello, I'm Michael Schaefer. And uh, I uh, was tri-captain with Frank Loria and Clarence Fiber, our senior year. Uh, when I first met Frank, our freshman year, uh, I wasn't really impressed with him as a person, as a ball player. Uh, but as, as the years went by, I ended up realizing he was one heck of a ball player. He, uh, he was, I was more impressed with him on offense than he was defense, but as you realize that he matured uh, as a defensive player more so. He wasn't a very big person, but physically, but he was big at heart. Uh, he'd do anything for you. Uh, Frank uh, admired Coach Scalapio very much. And Coach used to explain to you and try to teach you. And I feel that's one of the reasons because of Coach Scalapio that he decided to go into coaching later in, in uh, his young adult life. <clears throat> Coach uh, always taught us the fundamentals and, uh, of, of ball playing, the tackling and everything. And uh, Frank was uh, very astute in the huddle and the play would be coming. I was the tackle and, and of course, uh, Frankie was the halfback. And he would touch me on the shoulder and said, Mike, I'm coming your way. That was a hint for me to give it all I could to open that hole for him. Objective was to win against the competitor. Uh, when when Frank, uh, when, I, when I heard the announcement on the TV about Frank being killed in that plane crash uh, that November 14th, I, uh, I was shocked. I was so, so depressed. I couldn't believe it. I just didn't want to believe it, that someone so young would be taken in a plane crash. Uh, to me, it was, it was unbelievable that it really happened. And uh, for, for someone so young, it, you know, it was really sad for that to happen.